Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to this craft session on the Virtual Village Hall. I'm Rachel from I Printed That, and this afternoon I'm going to be sharing with you what I like to call Easy Boutique or Cheats Boutique. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer here, I am not a boutique artist, and apologies for any boutique artists that might be watching over the next few minutes. Um, I'm a print artist, and regretfully, I always seem to buy cheap candles. Now, if you're like me, you don't like to throw away the wax is left because the wick's all gone and you've got all this wax left and you think that could be used for something really useful. Well, if you're like me and do that, then I'm gonna show you how to recycle that wax and turn it into something beautiful. So, batik is a dyeing process. If you've attended any of my sessions before, then you probably know that I teach lots of printmaking techniques. So it's a dyeing process that uses similar ideas behind screen printing. The ideas of resist um, or stopping ink or fabric paint from getting through onto your fabric. So in this instance, we're going to use the wax as the resist. And I'm going to show you how to create some really beautiful colours, some textures, some merges using just fabric, wax and also um, the fabric paint. So let's start. I'm, I've got lots of equipment out today and I've got quite a small table. So if you hear any crashes, any bangs, then you'll know what's happened. Um, I'm not going to go through each thing to start with that you need. I'm going to go through each thing as we use them because some of them need a little bit of explanation. Some things you'll need to mix up. Um, so I will do that straight away. Um, I'm going to pop you down so you can see what I'm doing on the table and we'll get started. So I'm going to start with a piece of fabric. Uh, you also need something like a photo frame that with the glass and the back taken off. You can use um, a tapestry frame, an embroidery hoop, or you can even use two large books with the fabric suspended between them. The reason for this is because the fabric needs to be taut when you're putting the fabric, when you're applying the wax, and also it needs to be raised from the table. So I'm going to use a staple gun to attach my fabric. You could use drawing pins if you don't have a staple gun. You could use panel pins. And I just need to grab some more staples. I must have used them all up when I was practicing this morning. Staples in. So as I was saying, you could, if you don't have a staple gun, you can use drawing pins or panel pins. I always start in the middles of each side. So if this is a bit loud as I'm stapling. And then when I've done that, I just do it from the edges as well. That means that the grain of the fabric will stay straight as you're doing it, rather than if you are if you start from one side and move to the other. Obviously, if you've got an embroidery hoop, that's much easier. You don't need to fix it. You just use the, you just tighten the screw to hold everything in place. So just a few more. So if you've just joined us, we're doing Cheats Batik this afternoon. I'm just making up a frame so that I can keep my fabric taut and also raised from the table. So that's it all the way round. So that's nice and tall. Not You don't have to have it too tight, but just enough so that when the wax goes on, it sits on it rather than pulls onto the table. So with our frame and our fabric on, now we start 
start with the wax. So you'll need to keep the wax hot. I've got here, I absolutely love this. This is a little, little um, teapot warmer and it's just got a candle inside it just to keep the teapot warm. But I find that it makes a really good um, heat, heat, heat system for wax. Um, I've also got a heat proof um, tin, as you can see, it's just an old syrup tin, but you could use anything that's heat proof really. If you don't have one of these teapot um, warmers, then you can also use the oil burners that you get that just use a small tea light uh, to keep it warm. That will work just as fine. But just remember, it's very hot, so just make sure you're very careful as you're using it. I've also got two brushes. Oh, I didn't say that. I've also got a couple of brushes. I've got a thick one and a smaller one. So these are fairly old brushes. Don't use brand new brushes for this, um, especially expensive ones, just because you can wash them out with boiling water, but they're never ever gonna be the same again. So just bear that in mind. Don't use your really, really nice brushes. So I'm gonna go straight in with some nice natural designs. Now, when I paint on, what I'm trying to remember is that the wax is protecting the layer that you're printing onto, from painting onto. So the wax now is protecting the white fabric. You could also say it's resisting, it will resist the next layer of paint that we put on. If you can keep those two things in your mind, then that really is boutique sorted. You might also like to have just a piece of kitchen towel. So as you're carrying the wax across the fabric, it doesn't drop onto it. So that's my first wax layer done. So the wax has protected the white fabric. And I'm just going over slightly where it's not totally penetrated the fabric. It's actually quite nice when some of the paint gets underneath as well. So I'm just gonna put the wax to one side and I'm gonna go in with my fabric paint. So this paint here is just fabric paint. If you're not planning on washing this fabric, then you could just use acrylic paints. I've watered it down about half and half. So half water and half fabric paint. And then I'm going to apply it to the fabric. And you'll see that the wax starts resisting the water-based fabric paint. You want it watered down just so that it's a lot easier to paint on. And I'm not going to go for a totally solid colour. I quite like that there's going to be sort of a little, little bit of movement, a little bit of parts where it hasn't quite covered. That's going to add to the natural look that I want from this piece. So I'm just carrying on painting on the fabric paint. It's done. So I want to now add some more wax. And the wax that I'm going to apply now is going to protect the pink paint that I've just applied. I need this to be dry before I can apply more wax because it's cold and wet. As soon as you put the wax on, the wax will set immediately and then it won't resist the next layer of fabric paint that I'm going to put on. So I just need to dry this small area where I want to put 
my next my next bit of wax. Now to do this, I'm just going to use a hair dryer. Ideally, you'd want to you'd want to leave it, but just for the um, purposes of today's session, I'm going to use a hair dryer just on a cool temperature because I don't want to melt the wax that I've already put on. So this is a little bit of a warning if you want to just turn your volume down because the hair dryer is going to be a little bit noisy. It won't take too long. But if you want to turn your volume down now and then you'll be able to see when I finished uh, so you can turn it up again. While I was doing that, I found the mute button. So hopefully you didn't have to endure that for too long. So now I've got to paint my wax on and it's going to protect the pink layer. So I need to think I'm painting not in wax, but I'm painting in pink. So I bring my wax pot over. And I'm painting the wax on, making sure that it penetrates the fabric so that it will definitely stop the next layer that I put on. Just incorporate those little blobs that I did by mistake. I'm also going to add pink bits here. Now I didn't dry that bit properly and you can see what's ha what happens. So I don't know how much the next layer will actually be able to get through that wax, but let's see what happens. So then I'm gonna go with a slightly smaller brush I'm going to add a little bit more interest to this middle leaf and what I'm painting on is going to turn out pink in the final um, image, final picture painting. Making sure that that 
wax is going through. You have to work fairly quickly because as you can see as soon as it touched the wax touches the fabric it does start to set. Almost finished. Just add a little bit more detail. Maybe some, maybe that's some grass. And if you have ended up dropping any bits of wax over, then incorporate them into the design. So just take, drop off a large, the large bit and then just sprinkle the wax over and that'll get you out of a little bit of trouble if you've ended up splashing any bits of wax by mistake. So leave that to set for a little bit. That's set quite well actually. And I'm going to go in with my final colour. So this is a lovely turquoisey colour, turquoise teal colour. And I'm going to paint that over the top. And you'll see where I did my initial wax markings of these two leaves that will remain white, the white of the fabric, and the layer of wax that I've just done, this curly leaf here, and these bits of grass, that will be pink. Again, this fabric paint is a mix, half and half, half water and half fabric paint just allows you to move the brush a lot freer than if it was just fabric paint. And I love that because they're translucent, they're not opaque, they are mix, it's mixing with the pink underneath, which is giving some of this kind of deep lilac color, deep purple, but also I'm getting little bits of blue from the edges where it's going straight onto the white fabric. I'm also hoping that some bits of blue will travel underneath and I'll get bits of splashes of this, um, pops of this blue coming through. So that's our wax and fabric paint layers done. So ideally leave that to dry for a few hours until the paint's totally dry. And then very carefully take it off of the frame. And now it's time to get rid of all that wax. And we're gonna do that by using a hot iron. So I'm just gonna turn my iron back on, bring it back up to temperature. And I'm going to swap my table now for an ironing board. So bear with me a few minutes while, while I do that. So I'm going to protect my ironing board with some paper. 
we can protect it with some old fabric. Here's a piece of the teak that I did earlier on today and that's completely dry. So now I'm going to iron out all of these bits of wax. So a very hot iron, you don't need to use steam. We lay a piece of paper on top and then with my iron and you'll see immediately that that wax starts to melt. Make the paper, go in with another piece of paper to get rid of some more of the wax. And just keep going and going until you're happy that all that wax is removed. What's quite nice as well is that as you're doing this, you're also setting the fabric paint. So you'll probably see on manufacturer's instructions that you'll need to iron it. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone, really. And there you have your piece of the teak. Now that can be washed traditionally, um, it's boiled. I would just wash it by hand um, to make sure that you'll, you get sort of the rest of the wax out. Um, I tend not to boil them because I just use these as um, sort of frame them, put them in a photo frame. So that was my more at Rin Boutique. If you've got comments, any questions, anything that you think I've missed, then please I'll go through and answer all of your queries. Thank you ever so much for watching this afternoon. I hope that's inspired you candle wax that you might have uh, left over. Um, and have a uh, wonderful afternoon and I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.